All right, everybody, we are back. Fresh off of our um, tool series, you know, all those album reviews and rankings. And now, as announced in our um, Ranking Every Tool album video, what we've got going here is another huge discography. Our biggest one yet, of course, we're talking about Black freaking Sabbath, who have such a colorful discography, have gone through so many eras and singers and so many just transformations in their sound over the years that it's just going to be a super fun time going through these and revisiting all these. I've heard all these several times. Um, so I, I'm, I'm excited to, you know, dive back in and maybe, you know, see some of my uh, previous, you know, rankings on my personal lists that I, you know, keep of this stuff, not yet on YouTube, you know, see if they, see if they keep the same or change them up. Usually, usually they have been changing um, with all these I have been doing um, besides the tool and those actually stayed the same. That's the ranking I, I thought it was, um, you know, beforehand. But anyways, without further ado, here is the album that birthed heavy metal. I know some people say it was, you know, they, they say some other bands like Zeppelin and stuff, but I, I don't think that, me personally, it, Zeppelin's not heavy metal. But Black Sabbath is right here with their first album. It came out in 1970. Um, you've got, it, it's, it's self-titled, so Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath, and the first song's Black Sabbath, so <laughs> Sabbath all around, but anyways, yeah, uh, obviously you get, um, you get Ozzy on vocals, we've covered his stuff on here, love him, love him, love him to death, it, you know, he's their first ever singer, and just really the most iconic singer for the band, this is your most iconic lineup with Ozzy Osbourne on vocals, Tony Iommi, it's his band pretty much, you know, um, on guitar, one of the most legendary guitar players of all time, the master of riffs, man, the dude can do it all, um, he's even missing like a couple fingers and puts little stubs on there, but shreds like a madman, um, then you've got Geezer Butler, one of my favorite bass players of all time on bass, and of course the drummer Bill, War Bill Ward, who's got really kind of a jazzy type of drum style, and, um, bluesy drums uh drum style not my favorite drummer in the world but he's good you know he's good but anyways we kick it off again the birth of heavy metal with uh the title track black sabbath and man you talk about just eerie with the bells and the rain going on and just the doomy vocals from ozzy and that just monster riff that kicks right in oh my god i love this song man I used to kind of, you know, joke and kind of make fun of it a little bit whenever I was like a teenager and um, would laugh about like the, oh God, please help me, like kind of cry out that Ozzy does in the middle. But like, I realize now, like, and as I got older too, I was just like, you know what, that's kind of badass because it's just, it's so dark, you know, and really what kind of gave this, you know, the guys the idea of having this old dark aesthetic to their music and stuff is I've seen in interviews where they, you know, Ozzy and Iommi and you know the the guys have said that you know at this time in 1970 you know all all like the hippie movement was going on and the bright colors and all that that's what everybody was singing about so they decided to just turn it that whole idea on its head and just go with the darkest you know most opposing thing possible to all that bright color stuff really iconic album cover here too but yeah that first the title track the opening track Black Sabbath is one of the most iconic tracks in heavy metal history. I mean, man, this whole album is just a, it, it's a relic in heavy metal history as it's the first, you know, in, mo in many's eyes. And I would say probably that's the general consensus that it is. But that, that title track is just top notch, amazing opener. Then that really sets the tone for what this band is about. And then we get the wizard that kind of starts off with this bluesy little harmonica playing from Ozzy. That kick, but you know, don't be fooled because man, oh man, once Tony kicks in with that guitar, the riff is just again just a monster. That's the best way to describe it. Just chunky and just an incredible fuzzy kind of tone. And man, that the Wizard might be my favorite track off here. I, I freaking love that song. And then the you know, in between each riff, you just get like these kind of howling vocals from Ozzy on here. And you know, this is um. You got to think too, Ozzy, I mean, this is all these guys' first ever album they'd ever been on. So, 
it's just really like Ozzy's vocals. I mean, he's not like the most technical uh, singer to begin, you know, when he's never been like the most technical singer ever, but he, you know, he's got that iconic voice and he is a great singer. I think he can hit some pretty high notes, especially in this early, uh, especially during his Sabbath tenure throughout the seventies. But here it's just really, he's almost got like a little bit of grit to his voice of like, that just makes this album uh, that much darker. And the wizard, you know, it's very prominent in that one. Then on the last little portion here, it's really four songs, but really they're all like parts of one big thing. They're even all grouped into one thing uh, on the record here. We got Wasp, Behind the Wall of Sleep, basically with two S's because it's the whole, you know, bass intro to, uh, N to NIB, Nativity in Black. And so it's just a big nine minute, 44 second forward little part thing and I, that might be my favorite off here as well because you got the kind of groove to you know wasp and all that behind the wall of sleep and then the basically um that is you know geezer butler's just incredible opening just groove groovy bass uh solo that you know it, it, it's fun to play it, it's just iconic bass playing stuff and it's just got such a cool tone one of my favorite bass tones of all time is geezer butler's I can say the same about Tony Ami's guitar tone. And then, of course, after that little bass intro thing going on, then basically you get the, you know, really the whole grand picture of the song with uh, NIB, uh, Nativity in Black. And, man, you talk about heavy. You know, my name is Lucifer, please take my hand. You know, just talking about just some dark, dark shit here. And I, I just love that song. That's one of the best Sabbath songs of all time. That is, again, this, this album still holds up as heavy today. I mean... Obviously, it's not like death metal growls, but man, it, it's heavy. Like, it's just heavy riffs, heavy lyrically, in any way, in every way possible, you know. But anyways, then we get to side two, which I do, um, I do really dig side two, but I, I think it's, it's, you know, considerably weaker than, um, side one. You got a Wicked World here on side two to open it up, and that's, that's a pretty good song. I really dig that one. Uh, actually, but, um, so yeah, Wicked World, solid one, really good, you know, melodic, not quite as heavy, um, as the first side overall, Wicked World, I mean, they are still heavy, Wicked World, and then this next, this next thing, you got kind of another big piece, like, couple of tracks put into one thing, kind of like with the whole NIB thing, with the four pieces that make that one big song, and this one does it in like a 14 minute, 32 second situation here we're talking about a bit of finger sleeping village and warning which i could I, I could easily say that's my least favorite track on the album but i do i do dig it it's got some pretty cool transitions kind of jammy um you know real bluesy and heavy so I, I mean i i do really like that and it's a solid closer to the record you know um but and also i will throw in because obviously you know this is the u.s pressing but on uk pressings um there are there there's a cover of an old track. I forget who it's by. It's an old, old one. Um, Evil Woman. Uh, it's not the Electric Light Orchestra, Evil Woman, or whoever. But uh, it's it's like an old, old song. But um, Sabbath do it, and it's just, they, they do it so damn good. So I thought I'd throw that out here. I mean, that's not on this copy here, the U.S. pressing, but in the U.K., that was a part of Side 2. So, um... I, and, I, and that was actually one of, I, I could even go as far as saying that's one of my favorite cover songs of all time. I didn't even know it was a cover until like the past couple of years I found that out. But so yeah, Evil Woman is another just really cool one that they just add their heavy touch to. But overall, guys, Black Sabbath, I'm super hyped to jump into all this stuff. We're, we, we've covered this just iconic and incredible debut album. One of the best debut albums of all time. Um... Many say that. I'll say it too. Um, and then, of course, next time, we're, we're in the same year of 1970. They released two in the same year. Their follow-up album that is, I would say, their most popular album of all time, Paranoid. It's got the most, but their most played tracks of all time. And it might just be their highest selling one. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that's their highest selling album of all time. So, yep, next time, guys. In our Black Sabbath journey that we're entering here, this dark, wicked, heavy journey, we'll be taking a peek at their second album, Paranoid. So stay tuned for that, guys, and 
you know, let me know what you guys think along the way as we go through these Sabbath albums. Thank, thanks.